Uh, okay, let's start. Welcome back. Uh, so we were looking into uh, making an amplifier with a MOSFET. And uh, we established the fact that we'll have to first bias the MOSFET in such a way that it is in the saturation region of operation. And that we did by first turning it on by applying an appropriate GQ. And also uh, we needed to ensure that this VDS would have been greater than VGQ minus, minus the threshold voltage, right? And then we said that we can do this simply by adding some battery of the appropriate value. But uh, even though this sets the bias, we will not be able to use this for any, uh, any purpose simply because we do not have, I mean, we would want this uh, incremental current that would have flown through this, uh, through this transistor in the presence of an incremental input to go into a load, to go into an RL and not into a short circuit. Then we said that, okay, why don't we get rid of the short circuit and put an increment, put, put the load in series with the VDD and, and our MOSFET and simultaneously we would expect the input to be placed in series with the VGQ that we are uh, uh, using for bias. And then uh, subsequently uh, we analyzed it and we saw that for the, for the transistor parameters that we had, which was mu NC ox W over L was two milliamps per volt square. Uh, under uh, this, uh, under the assumption that mu NC ox W by L is this, and threshold voltage was one volt, and we had applied VGQ of two volt, we saw that VDD has to be how much, at least to keep it in saturation? 11 volts. It has to be at least 11 volts, which means it has to be greater than or equal to 11 volts. Okay, so, uh, and this, how much was the current, DC current, Poisson current uh, flowing through the MOSFET under this condition? Not the, how much? Two milliamps or one milliamps? One million. So, so this is one milliamps. And in the presence of an input, in the presence of an input VI, obviously this one milliamp current will change. And how much it will change by? It will change by an incremental amount. And the incremental amount is GM times VI. And then, uh, some of you might have already noticed that in the presence of, uh, in the absence of GM times VI, this voltage would have been, sorry, one volt, while keeping the transistor in saturation. But in the presence of GM times VI, can you comment on this voltage, the, the drain voltage? One volt minus 10. Right, right. So, so this incremental current, the incremental current that is flowing is GM times VI, which means that I, in, the, in the incremental sense, if I sketch the incremental equivalent of this circuit, so GM times VI. And these two are obviously connected because the transistor in the transistor, uh, by, by construction of the transistor, these two input uh, terminals are connected, right? And this is my drain, this is the gate, this is the source. So naturally, the, the voltage at the drain, right, VD, is minus GM times VI times RL. Or it happens to be the voltage. Ah, okay. So this one volt is is a quiescent voltage in the absence of any any incremental input, right? This is a DC voltage, right? 
because when you had VGQ equal to 2 volt and VDD equal to 11 volt, right? So this is not greater than or equal to in the, this particular case of 11 volt, the current would have been 1 milliamps and the drop across RN would have been 10 ohms, uh, 10, 10 volts, uh, which means that the drain voltage VD would have been 1 volt. This is the question. Yeah, so obviously some things will be given so that you will be able to uh, figure out what the other things are, right? So, for example, in, in this particular, uh, in this particular, if, if you assume this is the question, then one volt can be derived from the conditions that have been given, right? So, it's not necessary that every, I mean, the, 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 all the node voltage will be given. So, but enough conditions will be given so that you'll be able to figure out what the uh, absolute voltages are. Okay. So, now, yes. So, in this, do we always assume that there is no current through the gate uh, source? Yes, so at least for the uh, DC assumptions, you, this is looking into it as a capacitor, right? Since it's a capacitor, there won't be any DC current. But obviously, since it's a capacitor, there can be an AC current, right? So we'll come to that later. As of now, let's assume that no current goes into the gate, right? Regardless of whether it's DC or AC. Okay, fine. So, so what will be the total drain voltage in the presence of an incremental input, it will be the quiescent, which is one volt, minus GM times RL times VI. And how much was GM times RL that we derived with plugging in the numbers in the last class? Can you look and tell me? 20. It was 20, right? So one volt minus 20 times VI. Right, so this was VD, right? So this was total VD. So now, uh, uh, I mean, it's obvious that if we bias the transistor exactly, if I bias, uh, if I set up the bias in such a way that the quiescent VD is exactly equal to one volt in the presence of an input, it's likely that the transistor will go out of saturation. Right, do you see that? Right, so, in graphically, what am I saying? Graphically, uh, this is what that is happening. So if this is the IDVDS plot, so a transistor characteristics is like this. And this is my VGS Q minus threshold voltage, right? Which in our case, this is equal to one volt, right? But our VDS, if I bias my VDS, at one volt, which means essentially means that my trans my operating point is here, right? Now, if I apply an input, if I apply an input, obviously this operate this apps total voltage will move around. The total voltage will move around. It will it might increase or it might decrease. Now, depending upon whether it is increasing or decreasing, you are going more into saturation or more towards the linear region. So, which essentially means that. What is the conclusion out of this? What should I, as a designer, what should I not do? Yeah, so I should not keep it just at the edge of saturation. So I should be somewhere <laughs> away, right? So that I allow some signal swing so as to ensure that the transistor remains in saturation all the time. Okay, so which, which essentially means that How far I should keep uh, my how should how, how far should I keep this DC poisson point should depend upon what is the total swing expected swing at that node. Yeah, so amplitude at the I mean if I if I know that my poisson point is somewhere here and I know that my signal swings up and down then I should ensure that for the minimum, by the way, for the minimum or maximum, which is the critical point in order to ensure that the transistor might go out of saturation. Okay, so maximum at VD or minimum at VD. So this is VD. What I'm asking is that is this is the critical point or this is the critical point? The lower one will be the critical point, right? The lower, obviously the lower one will be the critical point. So how do I 
So now in, in order to figure out exactly where I should bias it, then I have to go and do an analysis, right? I have to go and do an analysis. And what will that analysis be? I'll have to ensure that the total voltage VD, right? Has to be less than or greater than, greater than total voltage VG minus the threshold voltage. Okay. Now, what is the total voltage VD? So, which was initially VDQ, whatever it was, right? VDQ minus GM times VI. And note that this VI, let's assume this VI is some VP sine omega. Okay. So v, VI is VP sine omega t. So, so let me write out the inequality, then I will plug in. V. <coughs> Should be greater than the input minus threshold voltage, what is the total input? It will be VGQ plus VP. Sorry, I made a mistake here, right? VDQ minus the gain, right? What was the gain? GM times RL times VP sine omega t should be greater than VGQ plus VP sine omega t. Right? Graphically, what does this mean? Graphically, this essentially means that if, let's assume that this is my, with respect to time, this is my VI, and this is, or rather this is total VD, VG, and this is total VD. So what is total VG? Total VG will be some, VGQ and a sine wave riding on top of that. So let's say a sine wave which rides on top of this. And what will be total VD? It will be some VDQ. Let me get rid of this, this axis, otherwise it might be. Oh, we can. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, so uh, uh, so the total VDQ, total VD will be some VDQ, and on top of that, a sine wave in which direction? What I mean is that will it be something like this, or will it be something like this? This one, right? Because I have a negative, negative sign, right? It's minus GM times RL times VI, right? So the phase is <laughs> reverse. So I should have an amplified version of this sine wave. Going like this. Okay. So now tell me, uh, so uh, let's divide this pl uh, plot into two parts. So this is one part and obviously the other half is the other part. So in which, uh, in the first half cycle, am I going closer to saturation or in the second half cycle, I'm going closer to the saturation as far as, or rather, in the first half cycle, am I going away from saturation or in the second half cycle, I'm going away from saturation when the signal swings? <laughs> first half cycle, because we are, the gap between drain and gate is closing, right? The gap between drain and gate is closing. What is the, what is the condition? My condition is total VDS should be greater than total DCS minus threshold voltage, right? In other words, I, I mean, since source is common, so I can simply say that the total, total VD should be greater than total VG minus threshold voltage. Or in other words, the difference be between the drain and the gate voltage can, or the gate and the drain voltage can be as max as a threshold voltage. 
right so in other words what am what am i saying if let's assume that my my amplifier gives you an ampli obviously the way i have sketched it doesn't look to be a 20 times amplification but let's assume it is and let's assume that i am uh, i am trying to increase my amplification factor right i'm trying to in increase my amplification factor then what should i expect i should expect this guy to go down even further and do this now the question what this condition is telling you is the magenta curve can go below the blue the black curve by a fact by an amount of one special voltage right so this can be at max one volt this difference because the threshold voltage i have taken it to be one volt right so as long as you can as you are as long as you are away from i mean this i mean as long as you maintain this condition that the out the drain the the swing at the drain does not go more below than the swing at the gate by one threshold voltage your transistor is in saturation make sense okay so which essentially means that i can simply look at this plot and find out a relation of what is the maximum amplitude of sine wave that i can give at the input in order to ensure that the transistor still stays in saturation right so now things become easy right so this is this amplitude is vp right this output is swinging by how much gm times rl times vp right so what is what is this value so total vgq essentially is total vg is essentially vgq plus vp right so this is vg and total vd is equal to vdq minus gm times rl times vp and we just have to ensure that your vdq minus gm times rl times vp should be greater than q as one special voltage okay so for a particular set of values of vdq vgq and threshold voltage right if these are set by quiescent conditions what what condition do you arrive at we arrive at the condition that vdq minus vgq plus one threshold voltage should be greater than one plus gmrl times vp which means that the maximum sine wave that you max, amplitude maximum amplitude of the sine wave is limited by your quiescent condition and that is okay see note the right hand side is all quiescent right vdq is quiescent voltage vgq is quiescent voltage threshold voltage is obviously not changing rl is given gm is a small signal parameter which again depends on the quiescent conditions right so uh, so from this at least you should we we uh, we were able to figure out what is the maximum what is the maximum vp or is the maximum si uh, amplitude of the sine wave that we can apply okay now note that this is also when as far as maths is concerned this is fine but when you are designing a circuit all of these are in your control right your vdq is in your control vgq is in your control gm is in your control right so if you have to increase if you have to increase vp right what is what what is the thing that you target first <laughs> so you might say that i can decrease i mean you know, i can start from from the numerator obviously the first thing is i can increase vdq so you want to increase i want to increase vp vp is in our control because vp is not all sometimes in your control sometimes not ideally 
what is this telling you essentially that it, so let me ask you another way what happens if 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 i apply an input which is more than vp what will happen what will happen to this qualitatively what will happen to this output sign wave sorry when you put in more than vp yeah. you can enter the uh, uh, linear I'll enter the linear region, right? So, so let's assume that the input is more than VP. So I will enter linear region. Do you agree, all of you? So what happens? If, what's so bad if I enter linear region? Y two two is introduced. Y two two is introduced. Agreed. But what? What qualitatively can you tell me? What will the output sine wave look like? Same, same and no. I'm, those are not the same things. If it's same, which means my gain is always twenty. But if I get into linear region, what am I compromising? What is so bad about linear region? I will not get gain, right? So in the linear region, so going back to my small signal equivalent, so what is my, what is the saturation region model? It, this is my saturation region model and I have an RL here and I have a VI here. What is my linear region model? This remains but I have an Y22 here. Right? So gain here, under this condition, the incremental gain is minus GM times RL, but the gain under this condition is minus GM, firstly GM in the linear region, not the GM in the saturation region, right? These GMs did not be same, right? Let me call it GM sat, GM lin by y22 plus rl plus gl uh, in terms of rl it will be one over y22 parallel rl right so clearly in the linear region your your gain is smaller right so if the gain is smaller what do you expect this uh, this magenta curve to look like when you enter um, linear region. Less amplification means it will be, will go something like this, and then maybe it's distorted. Exactly, right? So, worst case, if the amplification is zero, you will get a flat, almost like a clipping, but you never get a clipping because it's not as if push the amplification goes off, right? So, there is uh, there will be lower, smaller amplification, so you start getting some distorted sine wave. Okay, so now this is again a digression since you have taken 200. So what happens if we have this distorted sine wave? And by the way, this distorted sine wave is repeating every cycle. Yeah, not necessarily two parts, right? It, it's it's a waveform that is repeating after periodically after certain time, which means. You can break it up into multiple uh, uh, multiple frequency components. So the fundamental will be the fundamental of the sine wave, and then you have two omega, three omega, four omega, so on, so on, right? So in terms of signal processing, you will see that if you put in a sine wave of certain frequency, but the output is sine waves of multiple frequencies, right? In terms of audio parlance, it essentially means that I mean you get these high pitch sounds when you increase your amplitude, right? With a high pitch means higher frequency. So if you sometimes, if the audio system is not particularly well designed, if you increase the volume, you see some distortion coming in. So this is one of the reasons for that. So the, yes. Is the distortion necessarily a higher frequency? Distortion is always higher frequency because, I mean, okay. So now it depends upon how you define distortion. So in Fourier analysis, right? So in Fourier domain, what what is it telling you? If you have a, let's say nonlinearity, f of something, and you put in vi, which is vp sine omega t, right? Let's say vp sine omega t. The output, what you'll get, I mean, this is, this is, forget about Fourier, this is Taylor series. The output that you will get is uh, something proportional to this input, something proportional to the square of the input, something proportional to the cube of the input, and so on. Now square of sine, you will get two omega. Cube of sine, you will get three omega, right? That is another way of saying that you will get these higher frequency components, okay? So uh, so now when you, when you pass a sine wave through any sort of distortion, 
you will always get square cube, which means you will always get higher frequency terms. So you, you, it's not as if you put in a sine wave, you, you can automatically get lower frequency sine wave if you, uh, if you pass it to distortion. It will always be higher frequency. If you want, if you are expecting a, some lower frequency, then you have to do some other processing somewhere so that some single processing holds it back to a uh, lower. So, yes. Huh, okay, what is causing the nonlinearity? That's a good question, right? So, had my transistor been always in saturation, I, I would have expected a clean sine wave, no clipping, nothing. But since my transistor is going away from the saturation, which means I am going into a regime where the gain is not the same anymore. Right? <laughs> exactly, right? So, in a very crude term, what is nonlinearity? Uh, I mean, linearity, um, when you say linear, incrementally linear, you mean for equal increase in input, you are getting an equal uh, increase in output. Now, right, it's a proportional increase, right? So, sorry, it's not linear, it's like proportional increase. But uh, if it's a nonlinear, for the same in increment in input, you are getting a different increment in output, right? Each time that you increment an input, you cannot expect the output to increment proportionately. That's what nonlinearity is, right? So that if, if I break it down to uh, in terms of what is happening with the sinusoid, all I am saying is, as long as my gain is constant, which means I am below, I am here in this regime, my gain is constant means my input increases by a certain amount, output always increases by proportionate amount. But if I am getting into a regime where gain is no longer constant, which means my, I increase my input by one millivolt, let's say I expect the output go, to go by 20 millivolt, the gain of 20 means that, but then I am entering into a linear region where maybe the gain is 10, right? So in that case, for the equal increment of input of one millivolt, I cannot expect an output to increase by 20 millivolt, it will go by 10 millivolt in that, right? Which means that if you put in a sine wave, you should not get, you should not expect the same sine wave scale in amplitude. Ah, okay. What if we stay entirely in the linear region? Then you you have you have to deal with y two two, which means you won't get enough gain. But we will get same gain, but it will be. Okay, you will get the same gain if Y22 is independent of the signal string. Also, right? As it turns out, it's not because if you look at the expression of Y22, it has a dependence of VDS also. Right? So it's not also independent of signal string. So it's not as if you'll get away from distortion. Okay. Okay, fine. So this is as far as uh, the condition of going into linear region is concerned. Yes. You cannot get gain. You can get very small gain, right? So maybe in some portion of the linear region, you can get slightly more than one, but it always depends on this, right? It depends on this. So maybe GM times GM by Y22 is slightly higher than one. It's possible, but there is an upper limit to that. You cannot go beyond that. <coughs> okay, fine. So this is as far as this is as far as uh, uh, going into going into linear region is concerned. But is that the only concern? Now, I would like to point your attention to something else that is happening. So now, when input is increasing, right, this voltage is decreasing. But when the input is decreasing, this voltage is, when input goes down, the, out, the voltage of the train goes up. So I am going more and more into saturation. No problem with that, right? Good things. But can you comment on the total current? This total current is IDQ plus GM times VI, right? So now let me draw the sine wave again. So let's say this is my input. So this is BGQ and this is BP. And let me draw the total current, right? So let's say this is ID.
ID. So total current started off with some IDQ, but now it will, what will it do? Will it fall, will it be in phase with the input or out of phase with the input? In phase. In phase, right? So, so it will go. And so on, right? So what is happening in the second half cycle of the sine wave in terms of total current? What is the total current when I am at the trough? This is IDQ minus GM times VP, right? So this is GM times VP. This is GM times VP. Right? So now note that our, my current, I, I mean, when, when I expect my transistor to amplify and work properly, I am not expecting the current to go to zero. Right? So I have to ensure that the total current is always greater than zero. Right? So what is the other constraint that you are getting on VP then? Should be greater than zero, greater than equal to zero, which means the second constant that you are getting is VP should be greater less than equal to IDQ over GM. Yes. Yeah. So his question is: since we are in saturation, how can current go to zero? Right. So any anybody want want to take a stab at that? The question is, if uh, uh, we started off with the assumption that we are in saturation, so how can current go to zero? We are assuming a small signal model. Okay. So if I, IDQ and GMVP become comparable, would that not work? Yes, that is a problem indeed. I'll come to that. You had a query? Small signal analysis may lead to the Right. Ah, okay, so his point is that uh, when we are uh, doing the small signal analysis, we are assuming that our transistor is always in saturation and then we are using it to find constraints. Okay, so but the fact that it is in saturation doesn't, uh, doesn't, uh, uh, okay, so let me rephrase it in this way. Uh, even the, the current can vary in saturation, right? So all the, this constant, the, the, what this constant is telling you is that, assuming that it is in saturation, what is, is there a limit to which the current can vary? Okay, so that's all this is telling you. This is not telling you that transistor is going to turn off, right? So by the way, we don't expect the turn, uh, we don't expect to operate till the time the transistor turns off, because by that time the device is already so nonlinear, there's no point of operating there anymore. So anyway, we would like to steer clear. Now the question is whether this assumption, this constraint is a conservative constraint or a liberal constraint, right? So if I satisfy this constraint in the real sense, am I really turning the device off or I am slightly away from where I'm turning the device? Off? Right? That is what we're going to see next. Any, any other question? We need to find out a maximum limit, right? So this is the limiting condition. So you have, when you are designing, you never go to the edge of failure, right? So you, but you need to know where, it, what, what is the edge of failure? So this is all edge of failures. Yes. So this is the total current, right? This is total drain current. That is ID, right? So I would expect the ID to be always greater than zero, right? Otherwise, the transistor is simply not working, isn't it? If the transistor, if the current goes to zero, all the small signal parameters go to zero, isn't it? So there is no amplification. So everything is related to the fact that transistor at least has to be on, correct? So how do I know the transistor actually is operating and it's on when, when, when my current is at least non-zero? Right, so, so it's the, I am approaching it from 
from the out, from from the back side, right? So I am saying that if I am supposed to get if, if if my device is supposed to work, it has to carry an audio. <laughs> If, if if the equation that I am writing leads to a condition that it is a it is a, it is getting a it is leading to zero current, which means my initial assumptions are wrong. So common anticipation is correct. Correct. Exactly. So that is the other way of saying the maximum change of current, the maximum change of current because of GMVI can be equal to the IDQ, can be equal to the bias current that is flowing because only when I have that much amount of bias current, I can decrease it by that much amount, right? So, uh, so essentially, this also leads to a constraint on the bias current, right? If you want the output current to swing and still hope that the transistor in is in saturation, you have to ensure that at least that much amount of bias current flows because only if that much amount flows, you can take it away. Right, so that is another constraint. That constraint is this. That that constraint gives you this condition. So we want ID to be uh, less than equal to a certain. You want ID to be. So because we also want the VDS to be greater Correct. There are two constraints. That's why one is the, this is the cutoff region constraint. The other was the linear region constraint. Is the ID to be greater than equal to zero or less because the transistor has to be on. Ah, okay. Can it go the other way? Yes. In principle, you can, but in this case, in this particular configuration, can it go the other way? Principle, it cannot. Pardon? <laughs> but can it, in principle, if you apply VDS and interchange the VDS, then the current direction changes. But in this configuration, will it be possible? No. No, because you do not have a negative voltage anyway. Right, so maximum it can go to is zero. After that, the transistor is shut. It's shut off. Right, it's almost like nothing exists. You apply an input, nothing changes at the output. Right? Yes. So are we assuming that uh, all the voltages are positive? That V D S is positive, and yet uh, we are getting a negative current. That is the contradiction. Yes, the contradiction is you cannot get a you cannot get a current reversal unless you have a negative voltage. Right, somewhere. Uh, to have developed. Yes, some other question was there. No. Okay. Fine. So, uh, so if so, if we agree with the with this fact, we are getting two con two constraints on VP. One is the constraint that comes from setting the total current in a transistor to be greater than zero, and other constraint that comes from ensuring that the transistor is in saturation. So you will get two constraints. Which constraint will Will you choose? So which one is obviously smaller, right? So for any circuit that you see, right? For any circuit that you see, you will have to do this two analysis, right? So you design a circuit or I give you a circuit and I ask you what is the maximum input sine wave that you can apply so as to ensure that the transistor remains always in saturation region operation, which means if you have five transistors, you will have to do this analysis for all those five transistors. And each of those will give you two constraints. So you'll end up with 10 constraints. Out of which those 10 constraints, you will have one, which is the minima. And that will be the maximum amplitude of the sine wave that you can apply while keeping all the devices in, in proper working condition. Does that make sense? OK. So there was another question that uh, how can we, exp oh, I mean, how do we know that uh, and why, or rather, why should a device at all go to cut off when you started off assuming saturation, right? So the other way of answering this is this condition that I have arrived at. Is it a liberal condition or a conservative condition? What by that? What I mean is that if I satisfy this condition, does that mean the device is actually into cut off or slightly away from cut off? That's all we need to uh, establish. And in order to do that, we'll have to use that total. Uh, we cannot use a small signal model anymore, right? If I have to really figure out when my device cuts off, I cannot use a small signal model because all this is is linearized assumptions, right? I was hoping somebody will point out that hey, I mean, for the current to go to zero, I have to ensure that the total VGS is greater than VTH. That is that is a hard constraint, 
right? As long as my threshold voltage, as long as my total input, uh, total gate to source voltage is higher than a threshold voltage, I should be fine. So I should not expect, because that was the initial model we started off with. But this, this constant that we got now is a linearized, a constant that has arrived from the linearized model. So among these two, which one is a conservative model estimate? That's, that's the question, right? If it turns out that this, if it turns out that this is a far more liberal estimate, then we cannot use this. We'll have to go back to saying that, okay, total voltage is greater than threshold voltage, okay? So how do I establish this? We can look at the graph of, of ID VGS, not VDS, ID VGS, ID VGS. So what does this graph tell you? The actual graph of this will look like when transistor is in saturation, assuming the transistor is in saturation, will be, it will start from some threshold voltage and go something like this, right? And this equation is obviously okay. And when we say that my, I have set my quiescent voltage, which means I have set my ID and I have set my VG, VGS, which means that I'm, I'm somewhere over here. Let's assume we are somewhere, maybe let's take a point somewhere over here. No, what is pinch of voltage? Pinch of voltage, uh, pinch of voltage is VGS minus VGS, rather VGS minus VTA. So pinch of, when am I, uh, pinch of voltage relates to transistor going into linear region. Uh, about, uh, saturation. Saturation. Correct, right. Above pinch of, it goes into saturation. Correct. But here we are talking about cutoff. Here we are talking about the case where the current is actually going to zero. So you are, you are referring to this case. Where was this? Ah, you are referring to whether I am this side or that side. Correct. Yes, but here we are assuming that it is in saturation. The drain voltage has been set in such a way that it is in saturation. Right? So if the drain voltage is set in such a way that it is in saturation, it's always parabola. Correct? Okay. So let's assume this is VGQ and this is IDQ. Okay. So if this is VGQ, that is IDQ. Yes. Ah, okay. That was his question, right? So in there, when we I drew the cloud, I initially assumed that the transistor starts off from linear region. And then it goes into saturation. But whether it is starting off from linear or saturation depends on you as a designer. Right? So if I if I always say that, if I say that your VDS is greater than VG VGS minus VTH, and you have set your VD in such a way that this is true. Right? If this is true, then I am in saturation region all the time. So it's right, makes sense? Okay. So that's why when you have two graphs, you will have to uh, keep in mind what is happening to the other graph, right? So I am assuming that this is in saturation, which means the drain to source constraint is satisfied. Okay. Okay, fine. So if that is the case, uh, this is the total, Total, uh, total uh, this is the quiescent drain current and I applied an input and I'm applying an input. So my total current IDQ becomes, sorry, rather, ID becomes equal to IDQ plus GM times VI. So on this plot, how do I express this plus GM times VI? Along the right. So essentially, I'll have to draw a tangent, right? So this GM times VI is essentially when I'm saying GM times VI, what I'm saying is that I have moved my axis here, 
and this is the line that i am i am interested in and obviously the total drain current will be you'll have to add idq to that so essentially when does this total id go to zero when this this magenta straight line cuts zero make sense so visually what do you see i mean is this now a liberal estimate or a conservative estimate it's a conservative estimate right so when when i am saying when i am saying my input is swinging right when i am saying my input is swinging what am i saying on this plot i am saying that my input was initially at vgq then it is swinging on top of that right okay so let me sketch the let me sketch this so this is my vgs vgs is vgq plus vi correct so what is vgq on this plot vgq is this point right when i am swinging my input what am i doing i am moving back and forth around vgq on the x axis so i am i am going this way right forget the i mean i had to just show a sign here so i went up but essentially i am moving along the along the x axis back and forth so what is this magenta line telling you magenta line is telling you if i move this much on the left i am getting zero current predicted by my small signal model right but what is the actual plot telling you it's telling you that if i start if i start from vgq i can go all the way up to vth before i cut off yes. right so obviously the magenta line is a safer estimate you are not actually setting your current to zero you are steering away from it you are cut, you are not as if you are going to exactly to zero but it gives you a safer estimate obviously it is a safer estimate because also the fact that the actual current actual current when you hit this uh, uh, hit the point predicted by your small signal model the actual current is this it's non zero whatever be the value it's a non zero value however you should i mean you should be appreciate from this the way i have drawn at, at least the fact that the total current even though it's non zero will be much lesser than from where we started off with right so this deviation is quite high right so so one might argue again this is a qualitative argument one might argue that even though the total current has not got into zero the small the parameters of the transistors would have changed by quite a lot by the time i hit this point right so even though you will not get cut off it's not as if your your uh, sine wave will get clipped off but it will probably become distorted enough right it will probably become distorted enough for us to say that okay this is a good enough point till which i will i will dare to swing okay beyond that definitely i wouldn't and as it turns out when you do when you do design this also becomes a kind of conservative estimate and in order to figure out exactly how much is allowable you cannot do these hand calculations then you will have to do fourier analysis and see that what is uh, what uh, what is the strength of the higher harmonics that has been generated and then you compare the strengths of the higher harmonics with whatever is the specifications of the of, of your customer and see whether you are far away from an acceptable swing or away from it or, or closer to it and then you take a decision but obviously we will not get to that in this course in this course we will assume that as long as we are satisfied with with this constraint that is that the total drain current using small signal equivalent is equal to zero we are fine right this is what we will be following throughout this course yes okay so uh, so why don't you tell me what is the what is bothering you then i will be able to explain better 
Ah, uh, okay. So you mean this line? Ah, uh, okay. So the significance of that line is just to point out the fact that see, even though my uh, my incremental model is telling me that my total current is going to zero here, but it's actually not going to zero. But what there will be a certain value of current, right? So if I, if you have to really figure out what is the actual value of current, what will you do? You will extrapolate this and figure out what is this ID, right? So that's all this is significance of that, okay? So see, when you are doing small scene analysis, you are always saying that I'm okay with some, some amount of error. That's the inherent assumption you are signed up for because you are neglecting higher order terms. Moment you are doing small scene analysis, you are saying that I am okay with some amount of error. Now the question becomes, how much am I okay with? And in a true sense, that has to be left to brute maths, right? So you have to figure out what percentage, what is the uh, 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 what is the effect of the higher harmonics that are getting generated, and then you do that, then you say this is acceptable, that is not. But you have to have you have to start off with some hand calculation. So this is what we are doing: is we are starting off, we are saying that if we satisfy these, there will be some errors, but we'll leave with that. And then we leave it to the simulator to figure out whether that error is acceptable or not. Yes, hold on. He had a question. Okay, how did I create that magenta line? So, do, do you agree with the fact that when we did a small scene analysis, we said that the slope is, I mean, we are, we are drawing a slope, and we are figuring out the slope and extending that line, right? So, this is just the extension of that line. Right, so what I'm, all we are saying is that we have linearized around that operating point, which means linearization means for equal in, in uh, uh, the output moves proportionately to the change in input all along the line. That's why it's a straight line. And then we are saying when it cuts, it's equal to zero, but because I have shifted my model from the actual to a linear model. Okay, you had a question. So, for example, if we have linear amplifiers in cascade, uh, then would the errors not keep on? Yes, it will. His question is, uh, if there are many amplifiers in cascade, looks like if I have an amplifier, the first stage gives you some amplification, the second stage will again give you higher amplification. So looks like I am cascading errors. That is indeed what that what happens. So as a designer, what is the what is what is you need to do? You can say this is the maximum error I can tolerate, which means the previous stage should have lower and lower input, right? So as, as a result, when the gain increases, you have you can only afford so much of input, right? So that's the outcome of this, of this argument. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So I will post a tutorial to